Hello and welcome to our tutorial on exporting your manuscript from Campfire to a print ready file that you can use on Amazon or Ingram Spark. To compile your project's manuscript, go to the Share tab in the left sidebar. While you're in a manuscript, a new button will appear above the normal Export and Share options, Compile Manuscript. Select that and you can get started. In the lower right of this mode, you'll find a new button, the Preview tool. Click on it to open a side window that gives you a sample of what the finished file will look like. The preview tool is especially useful later on when you're adjusting your manuscript styling, its fonts, title placement, and more. We'll talk about that more later. You might also notice that a few of the standard navigation tools have changed here. Your list is now a list of everything in the file you'll be exporting, not your normal list of modules and elements. You also have a finish button for when you're done arranging the file. More on that later. Within the lists, there are three sections. The front matter. This is everything that comes before the start of your story. Sometimes it's also called the prelims or preliminary matter. It can be as simple as a single title page or several pages of content that preface the main part of the book. Next is the body. This is where the story lives. It's the part you probably think of first when you imagine the contents of a book. In most books, these are the only pages that are actually numbered. And then there's the back matter. This is everything that comes after the start of your story. Sometimes it's also called the end matter. It usually contains an about the author page or bibliography. To leave the compiler, click the back arrow in the top right of the sidebar. Aside from the usual manuscript elements, your story's front matter may contain a number of useful pages you might want to include in your final export, like the copyright, dedication, title, table of contents, or forward pages. Let's go through each one. The copyright page is added for you automatically. Fill it out and we'll create your story's copyright page for you. Just make sure that everything is filled out and spelled correctly. Next is the acknowledgements and dedication pages. These are simple text pages that give you space to acknowledge the people who helped or inspired you or dedicate your story to somebody or something. The title page is also added automatically and works just as it seems. If you open any book on your shelf, you should see at the beginning before the story starts, there's a page that includes the title and maybe a few other details like who wrote and published it. The table of contents is added automatically. It functions both as a way to organize what chapters appear in it and as a quick overview of your file stats. For example, the page will give you a glimpse of how many chapters are in the story, how many extra pages you've added in the export tool, and your word count. Checkboxes that are turned on will be included in the table of contents. The foreword is sometimes used if you'd like to include a bit of context or thoughts before the story takes place. We typically see these in nonfiction, but that doesn't mean you can't include it in any other story. In the body section, you can only create section pages or add manuscript elements. Section pages aren't required, but can help break up the story with dedicated title pages. Otherwise, all you have to do here is arrange the chapters in the correct order. Note here that chapters function a bit differently than manuscript elements and that you can import a manuscript element as a chapter or an element. Now, chapters are formatted as book chapters. This will be important when it comes time to style the book, so make sure any parts you want to have formatted as title pages are listed as chapters. You can quickly tell which are chapters by looking at the icons in the list. Chapters are numbered, whereas elements use the manuscript element icon. Elements give you flexibility to add custom pages because you might not want every section of your book to look like a chapter. Next is the back matter. Aside from manuscript elements, you can insert an about and acknowledgements page into the back matter. About the author is a great place to tell readers about yourself. Include an image if you like, write a bio, and include any social media you would like to share. These are excellent ways for authors to give readers who love their work a way to find more of it. And then there's acknowledgements pages. They're available in the back matter as well, if you prefer putting it here instead of in the front matter. Once you're done arranging your story, it's time to finalize it. 
Click the finish button on the bottom of the left sidebar and you'll be presented with several options for styling the manuscript. Click on one of the pre-formatted options or create your own using the typeface and style options presented. If you're creating a PDF, you'll have a few extra options specific to printing such as selecting margins and trim size. To your left in the sidebar, you'll also find a number of additional options, some of which are specific to a print or digital format. Use these tools to adjust text formatting, styling, and other settings. Your preview will update automatically as you make changes, so keep an eye on it to see how the final product will look. When you're finished, click the export button. You'll be given some information about the file and your selections before the export begins, so look this over and if everything looks good, begin the export. It could take a few minutes depending on how large the file is, but soon you'll have a new print-ready PDF or EPUB of your story to share. If you have any questions about advanced export, leave us a comment below or reach out to us on social media at Campfire Tech LLC. Thanks for watching.